Today, we're gonna to be talking about tables, which are another fundamental data type that can be used to store and organize data. Now, what makes this data type so significantly cool? Well, they're extremely useful because they enable us to store multiple values inside of a single variable. Now, there's actually two subtypes of tables. The first one we have is called an array, and the second one that we have is called a dictionary. And we'll first start by covering the array table. Now, before we begin going over what an array is, I figured I would create one so that you can have a visual on screen while we describe it. Now, starting from the top, I create a variable called empty table, which is just set to a blank empty table. I then created an empty function right here called example, and nothing actually happens with this function. I only wanted to create this to show that you can actually store this in an array as well. Then below where I create the function, I actually create the my array variable, and then the value of this variable is the array itself. So as we already know, arrays are a type of table, and they're able to hold multiple values inside of them. Now the values stored within an array are given a specific order, which begins at the number one. And whenever we refer to the order of a specific value inside of an array, we usually use the word index. So looking at the array right here, we can see that we have a couple of different values stored inside of here. The first value that we store inside of here is the number one. We then use the comma to store a second value, which is a string containing the word second. We then used another comma and added another value, which is true. We then added another value, which is actually the empty table variable. And then the last value that we added was actually the example function. So we can easily see that arrays are able to hold pretty much every single data type. Now, the next important thing that we need to understand is that values stored within an array have a very specific order. Now this order begins at the number one. So when we insert the one value into the array, this is the first value that we're putting into the array. So the order of this specific value or the index of this specific value would be one because this value is the first one inside of our array. Next, when we add the second value inside of this array, which is the string, the index of this value automatically becomes two as it's the second value added to this array. And then we can see that each time we add another value to our array, the order increases and increments from the previous index. So now that we've created a basic array, added some values inside of it, and understand that it has a specific order, we should now talk about how we can actually access those specific values that we stored inside of that array. So in order to access a value stored within the array, after typing out the variable name, we type out closing brackets, and then in between the two closing brackets, we provide the index that we want to access from within the array. So for instance here, I pass through one as the index. What do I get in return? I get the one value that's stored at the first index inside of the array. So here's an example of how we would access all the values within inside of the array. If we pass through two as the index, we obviously get the second element stored inside of here, which is the second string. If we index with three, we get the true value. If we index with four, we get the actual empty table. Now, when we index with five, we actually get a function reference. This is a little bit more complex, but since we're getting a reference to this function, we can actually call this function. And how do we do that? Well, we just create some closing parentheses after we get that value back. And the reason that this is happening is because the value that we added to this table was just the name of this function. It was just a reference to that function. So then when we index the array to get the reference to that function, in order to use that function, we actually have to call that function by using these parentheses right here. And if this function had any parameters, for example, we could pass through the arguments to that function directly right here as well. So it makes a little bit more sense that way. And now for what this would actually return is a little bit more confusing. So realistically, I would just kind of ignore what that would print out because it's not going to be very helpful to you. Now, the process of actually accessing a value from within inside of an array is called indexing. Now remember how the position of where a value is stored within the array is also called an index? That's where the name of this method actually comes from. So right here, what we're actually doing is we're indexing this array with the number one, which is also the index of the value that we're looking for. Now this is a little bit more complex, but we're gonna touch on it briefly. What if we wanted to add values to our array after we created it? Well, we would actually use something that you could think of as similar to a global function, and that's table.insert. Now when we use the table.insert function, the first argument that we're passing through this function is actually the array that we wanna insert a value inside of. So the array that we wanna insert the value into is my array, and then the second argument is actually the value that we wanna insert inside of that array. So the value that I wanna insert inside of this array is actually the sixth value string. So now this is what our array would actually look like. We would still have all of our pre-existing values inside of that table. And then we just inserted another value inside of this table, which is this string right here. And the index of that value would be six because it's now the sixth element inside of the array. Now, right below that, we can see that we are using the table.remove global function. Again, the first argument of this function is the array that we want to remove a value from. And now the second argument is the index of the value that we want to remove. So for instance, if we wanted to remove the true value, we would use the three index. So we would 
put number three right here, and then that would remove the true value directly from this table. So now if we look at what the array would actually look like, we still have the one value, and we also still have the second string. But now if we actually look at the third index, this time we actually see the empty table here. At the fourth index, we see the example function reference, and now the fifth index contains the last value that's stored inside of this table, so there's no longer six indexes inside of here, and the value of the fifth index is actually the sixth value string. So we can see that since we removed the third index from this table, all of the values stored after that index have also been decreased as well. So when we remove the third index, the previous fourth index and everything after that becomes one less, so the previous fourth index would now be the third index. Now we'll begin talking about dictionaries. Dictionaries differ from arrays because they enable you to specify the index of where the value is stored. Now I haven't even mentioned the best part of dictionaries yet. Since the values aren't automatically ordered like an array, we can use any data type for the index. Now I just created a dictionary so that we can have a visual representation of this. And as we can see, at least visually, dictionaries are pretty different than arrays. Another key difference between the two is how we refer to the index of this specific type of table. As usual, we still refer to the elements stored inside of the table as values, while the order or index of each value is actually referred to as a key. Now to help your transition from index to key a little bit easier here, one of the keys that I created inside of this table is a string with the literal word key inside of it. And the value of that specific key is another string with the word value inside of it. So on the left hand side of the equal side, we have the key. On the right hand side, we have the value. Now looking back to our array notes, we can see that the values stored within an array are ordered starting at the number one. But now when we look at a dictionary, we're actually forced to specify the index, aka the key, before we can even add the value. Now another way to help you understand the whole concept of key and value, when we store something inside of a dictionary, we do that in key value pairs. So mostly every single thing that we store inside of a dictionary has a key and that key and that value are a pair. So they're a key value pair. Now, in order to retrieve a value from the dictionary, we still use indexing. This time though, since the values aren't in a specific order, we need to use the specific key that we paired with that value. So right here, we index the settings dictionary with the play music key. And what value do we get returned? Well, we get true. We then do that for sound effects and we also do that for key as well. Now, how can we add things to this table after we've created it? Well, but what we actually do is index this table with either a brand new key or a key that we want to overwrite the value of. And then we use the equal sign and set the value that will create the key value pair and then store that inside of the table. So now we're able to index the table with test. And when we do that, we get returned the 100 value. The same way that we add values can also be used for updating values as well. So this time we index the settings dictionary with our play music key and we set the value of that to false. Now that we've done that, we can go ahead and index the table again with play music. And what are we returned? Well, this time we're returned false because we just updated that value. Now, finally, we're going to discuss how to remove a key value pair from the dictionary. In order to do this, we index the dictionary with the specific key, and then we set the value of that key equal to nil. Now, inside of this dictionary, once we set this key to nil, that key and that value are both removed from that dictionary. So when we set this to nil, this key no longer exists inside of that dictionary. So this time, when we try to index the table with play music and we try to print that, what we're actually returned is nil because that key value pair no longer exists inside of the dictionary. Now, at the end of the day, arrays and dictionaries are actually both the same data type, which is a table. The main differences are that arrays store values in a very specific order, and the position or order a value is located within an array is referred to as index. When it comes to dictionaries, they store key value pairs in no particular order. Additionally, we refer to the index of a value as a key instead of index. And finally, to cement the key value pair idea into your head, when we add values to a dictionary, we first must specify the key and then we set the value of that key. Now listen, in the future, if you find yourself getting confused with the difference between arrays or dictionaries, or even how to identify them, do not worry. In my opinion, the table data type is one of the most confusing ones, and it really doesn't help that this specific data type is practically two sub data types combined into a single one. In other programming languages, I feel like these data types are usually broken apart rather than being a single one. For example, in JavaScript, they also have an array data type, but instead of combining in two and one, they also have an object data type, which would be the equivalent of a Lua dictionary. Now, with that being said, as you continue learning and working on different projects, this will become much easier to understand with time. And with that being said, you should now have a fair understanding of tables. As usual, if you have any questions, you can leave a comment down below or feel free to join our Discord and ask your question in there. In the next episode, we'll begin talking about loops and iterating over tables. So with that being said, I'll see you guys in the next episode.